Hi, my name is Julie Ann Link, and welcome to The Music Link. This week on the Let's Link project, I'd like to welcome Ishmael Vitriago. Thank you so much for being here, Ishmael. Hi, Link. Thank you so much for having me. So nice to meet you again. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone watching, Ishmael and I met while we were studying in Zurich, Switzerland about 10 years ago. So just to start out, Ishmael, could you please share with us who you are and what you do as a professional musician? Sure. Well, my name is Ismael Vitriago, as you say. I'm from Caracas, Venezuela. And, and I'm a bassoonist for sure, like everybody here before, <laughs> I think. And yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bassoonist, I'm a professional bassoonist. In, uh, I, grow, I grew up in Caracas, Venezuela. I was part of Sistema, the Sistema program in Venezuela when I was... I started when I was 15 years old, but I started to play bassoon when I was close, close to 17 years old. So it was not so early like many friends, like many, many colleagues that I have met before, or even my, the same mates at the, at, the, at the bassoon class when I started in Venezuela. But yeah, I definitely started in Sistema in that, in that time. Um, well, I become a bassoonist, I become a musician, and that's what I am. I mean, actually, uh, I have worked in Venezuela also in Sistema. I was part of Sistema, I was a student. But then I become a, a teacher into the Sistema program, also a musician into the music agrupations in the in the Sistema in Venezuela as well. And yeah, I'm, yeah, for uh, approximately I think like thirteen years. Yeah, kind of, kind of. I I'm not sure right now, but yeah, almost almost thirteen years working and being part uh, of that program of that really nice program in Venezuela. And after that, I moved to Canada, the, the place that I'm living right now. I'm teaching now in Canada in another Sistema program inspired by the same one that I was in Venezuela. And it's a really nice program in the, in the province, it's the province of New Brunswick. It's, the Atlantic, it's one of the Atlantic uh, provinces in Canada. And I'm teaching bassoon here. I have a really nice class. Of course, it's when it has been really challenging because COVID, everybody knows that for sure. But uh, I'm so happy to be here to still teaching music and for sure even more because I'm teaching bassoon and playing as well. And when I'm having fun because it's, it's a really nice place. It's a really nice program. Ishmael, could you share with us the story of when you were given the bassoon or how you first saw the bassoon? <laughs> That's my favorite question, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it, feel, it feels so nice, you know, because usually I'm I'm not the person I'm the person that make questions in my in my YouTube channel. I'm yeah. never this I'm never in this on this side, but it's nice to be here. <laughs> And especially in English, it's my very first interview in English, as I told you before. So I'm so sorry, everyone, if you don't understand me, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm trying my best. So if you if you don't understand anything, please ask, ask to, to Julie uh, be, uh, after and for sure she will be <laughs> she will be happy to translate you what I was what I tried to say. So. As answering your question, well, it was nice because at the beginning when I, uh, uh, to be honest, before to, to, to study music, I was studying dance. I was a dancer. I started to study dance when I was eight years old and I fall in love with the dance. I, I dance a lot for almost eight years. And then my mom tried to convince me to do something, uh, something else, you know, why you, why you don't try any, any other art, any other art expression. And she say, why don't you try music? And I say, mm, I don't know. I like music for sure. With, with, without music, practically you cannot dance. And I said, "Well, uh, okay, let's let's try. Let's see what happen. What happens if I try music?" At the beginning, I was I was a bit like, mm, "I don't know if I like. I don't know if if I don't." But definitely, I fall in love with music. And but in that moment, I never. I I have, yeah. I haven't met a bassoon before. Even the 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 sound, even less the, the name, or I barely knew 
in the, the instruments at the orchestra. So I remember after a year just having uh, music lessons, just solfege lessons and music theory, the teacher asks to everybody, okay, what do you want to play now that we are finished the first year? And she's, and I say, well, I would like to, I would like to play violin because you know, it's the most common, common instrument. It's the instrument that you say, that you see every time, everywhere into the orchestra or anywhere else. Um, she, she is a violinist by the way. And she, I, as I told you before, I was 15, almost 16 years old. And she knew that it will, it will be tricky for me at that moment to, to get the position, you know? And she was really honest with me and she said, okay, you can get the violin, but I'm afraid that you won't enjoy this because enjoy the instrument because it's going to be tricky. It's going to be really challenging and maybe you will quit the program. I, she did, she, and she said, I don't want you to quit the music. And I said, well, but I don't know anything else. And I, I always say this because she was the guilty. She was a, because her I'm playing bassoon because she said, don't you want, do you want to play bassoon? And I remember when, when she said bassoon, fagot in Spanish and I was like, no, I don't want to play that. I don't know what's that. No, but no, 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 never mind. I don't want to play. A, I don't know what's that. I don't want to play this. And she started, oh, it's a beautiful instrument. It's the most beautiful woodwind instrument. I so, it's so nice. It sounds so, so, sounds so good. And she was trying to convince, convince me so hard that I immediately start to, you know, to, uh, no, 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 thanks. It's like, no, 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 thank you. I, I'd rather to play violin. So she insisted so much to say, okay, let's do something. I'm going to teach you violin, but the condition, I have just one condition. You have to take another. And I was like, well, okay, let's do it. I'm going to take, I'm going to, to take another one. So then she figured out to, she, she made everything to, to, for me to meet the bassoon, to meet the bassoon for the very first time. And it was love at first sight. Uh -huh. <laughs> when it's so, when I saw that instrument and I say, wow, that looks so nice, so cool, so many keys, so many things. Oh my God, it will be so nice to play that. And I didn't realize how hard it is to play at that moment, but, <laughs> and even more when I remember it was in a classroom, in, in the bassoon classroom, uh, the teacher wasn't there. It was a friend that was playing in that moment. And when he played, I was like, wow, yes, I want this. I definitely want this. And I didn't took any more, I, I, I didn't take any more violin lessons after that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the, that teacher, that teacher that, uh, that I told, that I told you, she was, uh, she, she is, she, she's still a very important person in my career because without her, if it weren't because she said, why don't you try the bassoon? Do you, don't you want to meet the bassoon? I've never met the bassoon. Could you tell us more about your teachers, Ishmael, and how they influenced you? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, my first teacher, do you know, he just talked me two or three lessons. I, I don't remember exactly how much, but it, I, I always remember him and I really, I really love him. He's a very important person to me too, because he gave me the, the, my very first read. And I think <laughs> yes. you never forget that. I yes. think it's something that you never forget. Okay. So he gave me my first read. He talked to me the, my very first fa, mi, re, do with his bassoon, because in that moment I didn't, I didn't have any bassoon, I didn't, yeah. I didn't have any bassoon in that moment. It was my very first lesson without a bassoon, without my bassoon, it was his bassoon. So he's Ronald Duque, he's still teaching. He's still teaching in Venezuela. And even as I say, even it was just three lessons, it was enough to me to get even more deep into the bassoon. I say, yeah, definitely that this is the instrument that I want to play because he, he was, he was amazing. He, 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 his way to teach is so nice. He wants to show you everything, everything that he knows, he show you every time. So after that, he quit, he doesn't quit. He just moved to another city. So the, 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 the teacher position was, was empty for, for a while. So another friend from the same classroom was teaching me and he's a friend that he's another professional bassoonist. And, and I remember he, he helped me, he talked to me for, almost a year, and then I decided to move to the conservatory. 
okay after the Sistema program you could you can take the conservatory and it, at the conservatory I got a very good teacher to he, he is Leonardo de Ang he he was my first teacher at the conservatory for um, I think a bit more than five years than five yeah more than five years at the conservatory and he taught me many 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 things he was he was really nice, he is a really nice teacher because he focused a lot into the technique, into the fundamentals and with that, with that hard job, with that hard work, because it wasn't so, it wasn't easy, it was really hard, I could, I could improve a lot, I could, I could understand many things and then I could play more music. When I realized that if I want to play more, I, I have to invest practicing in fundamentals to, to understand the way to do do I need to do for play? He, it was, it was really nice. It was really good to to me to understand that, and for sure he, he helped me a lot. But he wasn't the only one at the conservatory. Then he he left the position too, <laughs> five <coughs> years after. And another teacher at the conservatory, Heron is Bravo. He was the the last teacher that I got at the conservatory in Caracas, and he helped, He was totally different but in the in a good way because he worked with me the music he he showed me the music that i can play with the bassoon how to enjoy it how to play it how to say something with the bassoon how to say something with the instrument with the music i play from the any kind of any repertoire baroque repertoire classic romantic so it it was I mean my teachers have, have have been very important for me. After after Heronis, I never I mean I never stopped to have teacher, I never stopped to learn because in Venezuela we got a in a moment it was really special because in a year, through a year we could get like two, three or even more than three bassoon teachers coming to Venezuela and and teaching master classes and it was so nice. I could get lesson with Klaus Tunemann two times and Matthias, I met Matthias for the very first time in Venezuela and it was amazing. Uh, George Sakakeni, uh, Henning Trog from Berlin Philharmonics. I, I, I don't remember, but I, I had many, many lessons. I could, I could have many lessons with Henning Trog. It was so amazing. And yeah, yeah, it was it was really nice. It was many teachers went to Venezuela and definitely the when when I put together all the teachers, my, my formal teachers at the conservatory, but also the the other teachers were were who I could take lessons at at least one. It was really nice because I could I could get I could improve, I could understand many, many, many things every time and for sure I could take the best of everyone and try to find a best way to, to play the bassoon. Ishmael, could you share more about what the music programs were like in Caracas and kind of a day in the life of your studies? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> That's a really nice question. Yeah, because you remember me when, when I told you, did you remember I told you I was almost, well, I, when I started to play bassoon, I was like, 16. Yeah, I already was 16, close to 17. And I remember in Venezuela at that moment in Sistema program, the, every every center had a, a youth orchestra. And yeah, every center had a youth orchestra and like a kindergarten orchestra. It's not exactly the name, but it's, it was like two levels, okay? The, the beginners and then the youth orchestra. But because I chose the bassoon, I just went directly to the youth orchestra because there is no bassoons. In that moment, bassoons weren't the, the mass, you know, no, nobody, not everybody choose the bassoon, not everybody take the bassoon for play. So uh, as soon as they get one bassoon, okay, go to the youth orchestra immediately. And it was like, but, but I start to play like yesterday. No, it's okay. No worries. You can do it. And I remember my very first one, one of my very first concert with the symphony orchestra, with the youth orchestra. We were playing Hallelujah from Handel, and I didn't even know I, I, I didn't even know how to play Sol Dies or C, uh, G sharp, and I was like, "What? What I'm doing here? I don't I don't get it. Help me, please! Somebody help me!" Yeah, and it was so funny. I remember I still remember that day, and I say, "Wow, so crazy!" But that's mostly 
I cannot say that it's still happening right now because I have it's, it's long time I have not been in Venezuela and even before to, to go abroad Venezuela I didn't work on Sistema anymore but I can tell you for sure many years that was the, the experience every day just go and play and play and play but uh, so can you take so can somebody tell me how can I play F sharp? Yes. <laughs> oh, that way. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, I got. So, uh, and now C sharp. Oh, okay, thank you. And um, and it was nice because even the even even the the teacher wasn't with you every every day every time. Your friends, your colleagues, your your mates from the same from the same section helped you a lot because everybody every time one of them were. Or uh, had more time playing bassoon, so knew a bit more at the, about the fingering, about the fundamentals, and it was it was really nice. It was really nice. So when you get this day, when when you were, when I was on system, I was like every day practicing from Monday to Friday, and I remember sometimes even from Monday to Saturday mornings, practicing, 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 and it was like that until I got. Uh, even more, even another groups, uh, music groups in the system. I then I went to the provincial youth orchestra, and it was exactly the same, practicing, practicing, practicing. And then I got a symphony band, a youth symphony band, the Simon Bolivar youth symphony band, and it was the same, practicing, 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 practicing. So that for me was really good because you practice every day, every day, every day. Are there any tips? or advice that you could share with us about what you've learned about the music industry since working professionally? Yeah, well, I haven't been so deep into the industry, but I have done so many, so many, so many jobs, so many work into, I have, I have done some recorders with that youth orchestra, uh, youth symphony band, and also with the youth orchestra. Uh, and for some friends, for sure, I have I have made I have done some collaborations, and for me, my 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 own experience that what I can share from my own experience is, is is nice, but we have to be very very prepared, very very prepared. It's something that you will enjoy, but sometimes you think, okay, yeah, this I'm ready for this. I can I can make a recording. I can make a. E EP or whatever whatever you want to do but my 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 advice is to be sure you are completely prepared for that the post production the production and even yeah the pre production yeah it's really important because sometimes it can be sometimes it can be a really tricky i remember i was i was uh, i was called for us for a cd project a really nice project but i i didn't prepare enough I wasn't prepared enough. My read wasn't good. Uh, I didn't. I didn't have too much time to learn the music, but it's not an excuse. And for sure, when I went to the to the recording, when I went to the studio, I wasn't prepared. Everybody was prepared, very very prepared. So I was the only one that I wasn't in a one hundred percent. So I they kicked me off. <laughs> <laughs> they kicked me off. They kicked me off, and it was it was fair. It was fair, totally fair, fair enough. Because everybody was focusing, everybody was working hard in the production, and I really want to do that, but I wasn't prepared enough like they, like like everybody else. So that's kind of my advice if you want to to go deep into the industry. You can go for sure. Everybody can go. It's it's not nowadays. It's, I think it's even more easy because you don't you don't need to be into a big big enterprise or a big name, big you know big cell or nothing nothing like before is uh, nowadays is even more easy but even though you need to be very very prepared and to know what do you want to do how do you want to do and make sure that you are going to invest your time into until you get have you ever thought about changing careers outside of the music industry and music yes <laughs> <laughs> could you share about any of your thoughts or, or, you know, other opportunities or, or anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I wish this, this were, uh, just no question, but I know that you, you, you want more. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you want more and it's, I, I, I understand because yeah, it's not nice. It's not nice. I, I mean, I fall in love with the music for sure. I fall when, 
when I when I made the music, when I made the bassoon, when I made the orchestra, I said yes, this is what I want to do forever. I want this. I want this. And for sure, the the life nobody nobody say you has a life because the life is not the same for everyone. Not, not, not everybody has the same chances, the same opportunities. Sometimes you had, sometimes you don't, sometimes it takes more time. So I remember, yeah, when I was at the conservatory, I was trying hard, trying hard, trying hard, but things doesn't happen as like uh, I really wanted to, to happen it to me. And in those moments when you, th when, you, when you think, when you realize, okay, I'm not doing the things that I want to do, how, d how it's not, it's, yeah, it's not happening the way that I want. So then I, then I, I just start to think, maybe I have to quit. Maybe I have to try another thing. I try informatics. I, I work with, uh, I, I work in a bank. I work in a bank in Caracas in the, in, uh, with the informatics department and te technology. And it was really nice because I really liked the, the computer, the systems. I, I'm not a programmer. I, do, I, I don't know anything about programmation or th stuff like that, but I like the tech. I mean, I, I, I like everything uh, with the technology. And yeah, I, I did that like twice time. I took, I took two long breaks to, to make sure what I want. So when I work in a bank uh, or when I work in another, in another, just, it was just a, paper paper job I, I was working in a in a copy center also for 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 a few years and i realized okay then I, I i say okay is this what i want for to do forever working in a bank in an office every day coming to the office working from that time to that time and then go back and every day like that and then i realized no this is not what i want this is not what i want so i start to figure out that that I have to be patient, but not stop to work. Never stop to work. Okay, some days I know sometimes it's really hard. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes you don't understand anything. And I also get uh, professional help. I went to a therapist because I, I remember the second break I was in a meltdown. I was completely meltdown. Many things happens in my life. Many things happens in my career, in the, uh, my, the fa my family. Many things happen at the same time. So I melt down and say, I took a break from the bassoon also because I couldn't play any note, even a single note I couldn't play for 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 months. So I get help. I get professionals. Prof I got help. I got professional help, and it helped me a lot to understand that my way is just mine. It's not the same like everybody. So I start to understand that everybody build their own way. Thank you, Ishmael, for sharing about that. Um, could you share with us about your teaching career now? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I started to teach when I was 23 years old. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was 13 years ago. I was 23 years old. Uh, I still was at the conservatory at the youth orchestra, and I I started because a friend was was the, the director was the center director in one of the uh, Sistema centers in Caracas. He he asked me, "Can you go and teach bassoon? We don't have bassoon teacher." And I say, mm, "I wasn't too, I wasn't so sure to take that position at the beginning, but then some some things." I mean, I was doing my education, music education bachelor at the university, and I say, well, it's time to to put in practice all the things that I have learned till now. And I say, well, okay, yes, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, I I want to I want to teach. And it was one of, one of the most wonderful things that I have done, because when I start to teach, I realize that you don't know anything. <laughs> You don't know nothing until you start to teach. Because when you practice by yourself, when you go to your practice, when you go to, to your lesson with your teacher, of course you learn a lot and you put in practice. But when you teach, you need to learn how to how to teach all the thing, all the stuff that you have in your mind, that you have in your experience. And that was a a big time for me when when I remember th simple things like how can I use my tongue? Why do I have to use my tongue? And then I realized, okay, how can I play that? I start to say, it's something that I don't think about it. I just do it when I play bassoon. 
And then I, I remember I just got just one student at the beginning, at the very beginning, then I got two, three, four, five. In a moment, I got like 12. And every student is completely different. I cannot do the same for everybody. Maybe some things, yes, the fundamentals, of course, but the way that you treat, the way that you teach, you speak, you come close to your student, it, it cannot be the same for everyone because like you, like me, everybody is different. So teaching is one of the most, the most wonderful thing that I have done and it's still done and it's still doing even more now. <laughs> I'm still doing it's, it's nice. It's, I have learned a lot. I have learned a lot. At the beginning, I was really strict. You know, I was the practice, practice, yes, practice 40, 40 days, 40 hours a day, practice. And when you cannot go anymore, keep practicing because I really want to my students improve and play better, better, better and enjoy and do many, many things. And then through the years, I just realized, no, that's, that's not the way that I want to do anymore. So, uh, Oh yeah, if you speak with my students, with my very big, with my, with my very first students, they're going to say, oh, he was so rude. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. I know, I know. I remember. I was, I was. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I still, I still, I still say I'm sorry to my student. But yeah, but that's why I say that's the, the best way to learn. That's the way, the best way to learn and is... Yeah, it's something that I, I still enjoy. It's so nice every day because sometimes, for, for sure, it, I have teach, I have taught for by 13 years. And in a moment I think, oh, is, this is maybe it's going to be like this every time. Somebody is going to need this, somebody is going to need this. But no, it's not like that. Every, every year, every new year, every new student, many things different is going to happen. And I, then I have to learn some, some something different, something new that I have learned, bef learned before. And that's nice because I like to learn. And I think the best way to learn is teaching at the same time. Could you share with us about your chamber music career, Ishmael, and more about your bassoon ensemble? Sure, sure, for sure. I would love to share about that. Uh, well, my chamber music experience had been really nice. When I was at the university, I was, I was for I was in a contemporary music chamber music ensemble. Yeah, I'm so sorry if I didn't say good. <laughs> yeah, I remember Beatrice Bilbao was the conductor of that ensemble, the 20, uh, 20, 20 and 21th century music. It was so good. It was a really nice chamber music group because we play very, very new music, music from you know, from my teacher, Beatrice, and even music from the com com composition student at the university at the same time. So we, we play for the very first time their, their, their works, their, yeah, their music works. Um, yeah, like music like Stravinsky, Copland, many, many things, everything quite different, different formats, different things. And it was just so, so, so nice. And it helped me to me to understand a lot of the of the music of the yeah of, of the 21 and 20th century for sure and then as you said uh, well for sure i have I, I cannot remember exactly every music chamber music that i have been but i have been in many woodwinds chamber ensembles for sure really nice uh, uh, in Sistema, Sistema program, we did many special camps for chamber music and I really enjoyed it. I played Mozart, Grand Partita twice or three times. I play Gounod, Le Petit Symphonie. Um, many things, many things. I, I cannot remember everything right now, but it was so wonderful even into Sistema program to do chamber music. And, and as I just said, you already say from the beginning and now, yes, I made a bassoon ensemble. When it was uh, before to finish my my teacher position at Sistema in Venezuela, I start to with that ensemble. It was nice. I mean, I I was thinking about that bef years before to to found it. I was thinking in a place in a in a group where just bassoon can play and can play any kind of music anywhere, not just in a concert hall, not just in a opera hall house everywhere, anywhere, any music. So the the way that it started was really nice. I remember I was on a summer break. I was in Caracas at home. I didn't have money to go anywhere. I was looking to go again to Zurich, to Suiza many times, but 
get in Venezuela, the situation was really, really hard to go abroad. So I say, well, I'm here and I say to my student, hey, I'm at home. If you don't have anything to do in your, in your holidays, in your summer break, come every day and let's practice, let's play, let's play every day. And they were so happy. They were, oh yes, let's, at the beginning, I, 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 re I have to be honest, at the beginning when I asked to them, I, I, I answered myself, oh, come on, you're so boring. Spend, <laughs> spend the summer, all the summer playing and practicing, but they, they love it. They love it. They went every day, Monday to Friday, for four weeks at my at my home, playing from morning to evenings. So it was nice. It, it was beautiful. It was beautiful because we start to do fundamentals, uh, scales, uh, milde, <laughs> alarm, uh, many things, many things, many things. From going through all key signatures, all tonalities, and and then I start. Okay, let's do something more because we spend. I, we did a lot of fundamentals. Okay, let's start to do music. And I took the the book of the Giorgio Versilia, the the, the Giorgio Versilia uh, quartets for bassoons. Uh, I had at home, and I say, okay, let's do some of those quartets. And we start to enjoy so much. We 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 did we did enjoy a lot to make that music. And I say, well, maybe it's time to make to to run the ensemble and. And it born. <laughs> Amazing. And it started, and it started that way, and it started to, to, to say, okay, let's do it, let's do this, let's do it, let's do this for, for real. Let's take it, let's take it really, really seriously. Let's do it. Let's work on it. And they say, yes, we want to do that. And it was amazing. We, we play in, in muse at museums. We play at cafeterias at ice cream store we play uh we play on, in, at the streets on the streets and we play in, in a mall i remember a really nice experience they love and i love to uh, we went to play in a mall and the way to catch the attention of the audience was playing into the escalator the, the, yeah so <laughs> We were playing on every floor, every level, until we reach the downs, the downstairs, to reach the like the amphitheater, and it it was so nice. It was so so nice because, I mean, I also at, at the same time because I st I mean, everything was teaching. Everything was teaching. I still doing the ensemble was teaching at the same time playing music, but I really enjoyed that they learned that the bassoon is doesn't belong to the orchestra, not just to the orchestra. You can take out the bassoon from the orchestra. You can take out the bassoon from the concert hall and you still can do music and very nice music. So it was so nice when they understood that, when they realized that, yeah, we can do that. And even more, it was so nice when we went to anywhere and people start to watch and I was like, what's that? What's, what's that bazooka? Is, is, is that a bazooka? <laughs> is that, what kind of gun is that? And they said, no, it's a bassoon. Have you met the bassoon? No. And have you listened to the bassoon? No. Okay, listen. How can sounds four bassoons, six bassoons, eight bassoons at the same time? So everybody, everybody was like, wow, we never imagined how five, six, or even four, just four bassoons can sound. And it was, it was beautiful. It was so, so beautiful. I really enjoyed it. And I hope that I can do it, do it again some, someday. <laughs> Is there a memorable orchestra audition experience that you could share with us about? Yes, yes, there is. There, 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 there are many, but I, I would like to share about one. I was prepared really, really hard for one audition for Venezuela Symphony Orchestra, the oldest orchestra in, in my country, in Venezuela, in my place. Uh, I really want to get to get there. It was my dream. That was the, the place of my dream. Uh, because my teacher from the conservatory, the last one, Heronis, was playing there. And I played with, with, with him like an extra, extra bassoon, extra musician, many times. And his teacher also, Filiberto Nunez, the, 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 the teacher of my teacher, you know. And I was wondering, oh yes, I want to get there. I, 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 I dream with that. I dream with that many years. And then when they open the position, when they open the audition, I say, okay, I'm going to do it. And I prepare a lot, a lot, a lot. I prepare, 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 prepare. I remember uh, telling to my friends, to my non-musician, non-musician friends, 
sorry I cannot go with you, sorry I cannot do this to my family, sorry I cannot go to the beach, I cannot go anywhere, sorry I'm not, I'm not available. Uh, and people say, well, what are you doing? I'm preparing, I'm preparing myself, I really want to get this. So I prepared a lot, I made the audition and I didn't get the position. <laughs> I didn't go, I didn't get the position, but you know, I felt so happy because f until now that had been my best audition ever. It was my best audition ever. I was, I was, I played so nice and in, I enjoyed to play so, so much in that audition that when I finished my, I, I was, I wasn't, I was, I wasn't thinking about, oh yes, I won. No, my, my, what, what, what I was feeling was like, wow. I play so nice. I like the way I play, but I I didn't get the position. I think I don't remember. I think nobody nobody got the position. Nobody. Yeah, it was like uh, non. I don't know how to say that in English. It's why it's like non context or yeah. No, no, nobody. At the end, nobody got the, got the position. So, and my friends, some friends were were with me for the for the same audition, and they say, "Wow, you play so good!" And I say, "Yeah, I like it. I like it. I really like it." So even that I, I didn't uh, I couldn't get the position I really I really enjoyed the process for that and I, I then I understood something that I want to share with you also is that when you don't get a position in a, in audition for an orchestra or anything just uh, uh, orchestra master degree whatever you wherever you are going to go it doesn't mean it doesn't it doesn't means that you are not ready. It doesn't mean that is you are you are not doing well. It doesn't mean that you you are not the you are not good into whatever you are doing. It doesn't mean that you are not a good bassoonist. Uh, it doesn't mean that you are not a good musician. Because for me, and that's the way that I I learn is is fifty percent your work, but it's the fifty percent fifty percent the people that is listening to you, the audience, the jury. So it's not everything is not. It's not in, in you, it's not just you. There are many people listening to you and somebody maybe likes you, somebody, some, maybe somebody doesn't like you. It's okay, it can happen. So I think it's pretty much important not to feel bad if you don't get a position. It's not easy, just keep working. It's not in vain. The work that you did for that, that audition never goes to be in vain, never go to be in vain. Because it's, a, it's, a, it's an investment that you, that you did for your improvement. Ishmael, could you share with us any tips or advice on coping with music performance anxiety, if that's something that you've experienced? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah, for sure. I have experienced it. And, and yes, um, well, I, what I would like to, to say is that I didn't realize that I was suffering anxiety until I, I got help until I got professional help. I didn't understand. I mean, I felt bad. I felt my my heartbeat going faster, sweating, and I say, okay, I'm, I'm not, uh, maybe I'm sick. Maybe I'm not okay. Maybe I have to check my blood. Maybe I have to check my, whatever, do a complete full scan to see if everything is okay with my body, with my, whatever. If I'm not sick, I was thinking, okay, I'm sick. And I didn't realize that it, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't sick at all. Yeah, it was sick, but it wasn't my, just my body, it was my, my mind, my mindset at the same time. I didn't understand what's anxiety, was a panic, was the panic uh, when the panic goes, shows and, and hit you, you know, to have a panic uh, uh, attack. I don't know, is that the way to say it yes. in English? And yeah it, it's so so, so it's, oh my god it's so awful it's it's not easy to 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 understand that at the first moment so i think that one of the best way to deal with that is to get to get help professional real professional help because it's like a like I said before, like when you teach somebody, it's not the same way for everybody. Anxiety is not the same for everybody. My way to, to deal with that anxiety is not the same way. It's not going to work for everybody. Now, now I can understand why I'm, I get anxiety. I get, I get anxious sometimes. And now I know what things makes me feel that. 
what things, why I'm into a panic attack or, or why I'm close to and how to go out without die. Okay, well, not literally, it's, <laughs> but yeah, it's, and it's something that maybe people say that, no, I don't suffer that, I, don't, I haven't suffered at, at, at all, but maybe you had, but you don't know, because, you know, no, it's, sadly, at schools, nobody, nobody, t nobody teach uh, emotions, nobody teach mindset, nobody teach meditation, nobody teach many things that it's really helpful for, not, for, not just for musicians, it's for everybody. Um, my advice is, 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 is pretty much that, get help, get professional help and, understa and understanding why you feel like that is going to be very, very nice because then you can, you can go further, you can keep going, you can understand why and then solve it and then just keep going. Because it's just, if you don't go, if you don't understand what is happening, if you, didn't, didn't, you don't realize to why is what is happening to me, you can stuck and you can get stuck for a while and it's not nice because it doesn't make you feel happy, it doesn't make you to feel comfort, it doesn't make you to play, it doesn't make you to, to enjoy when you play because you know, every time is just getting more and more and more and more and then you cannot handle it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ishmael. Could you share a little bit about your reed making style and any techniques? <laughs> <laughs> wow, 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 wow. My reed technique style. To be honest, I'm still learning how to make reeds. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh my God. I haven't, even more when I moved to Canada, you mm -hmm. know, something that is really nice when you live in, in a city like Caracas in Venezuela, we are in a valley and the weather is pretty much the same through the year. So just like five more degrees in summer. We don't have summer, but in the most warming season and five degrees less. So barely goes down that 18 Celsius degrees. So and barely goes more than 36, 38 Celsius degree. It's not, it's not really common. It's always between those, those points. So Ritz work really nice in Caracas. I didn't realize how nice Ritz work in Caracas until until I moved to Canada. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think I have a technique. I don't think I have a style like that. I just, I have learned from many people, you know, the Ritz making, I had made, I had made reads with many people that went to Venezuela, my teacher, my friends, and every time I asking, okay, when the read, has the way that you build the read, has your way, has your way, and I compare, and I tried, I try, I, I always going through, I always like to try something, and if it, that works, good, but sometimes I just go back to, to, you know, to like back, back to basics. Yes. Okay, so try to do everything as much basic I, I can do it. I, and, and when I say basic, is the basic way that I, I learned from the beginning. So, because it's, I know it's not the same for everybody. Um, I try to, yeah, I try to understand every day a bit more about the read process, about, about the, the cane, about the, the properties of the cane, the what somebody is, if somebody made, made a research about the cane, about the, you know, the flexibility, the density. I always want to, 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 to learn a bit, a bit more, to understand a bit more. But at the end, for me, is I want to try, I just keep doing reads the way that it works for me. The, way, the read that it works for me, the read that is, is not for me. I don't like to play with hard reads. I, I used to play with hard reads before and I love it. But then I realized that my mouth is not going to, is not, <laughs> not going to survive <laughs> for a long time. So I start to to use soft reads, and then I realized, wow, you can play with soft reads, and it sounds good. It sounds beautiful. <laughs> you can do many many things. So for sure, I know. I like I like when I play. I like to play powerful. I love to play with presence. Even more when I'm playing a solo in the orchestra or whatever I'm playing, if there is a bassoon solo, I like to be very present. And I like I like to make sure that everybody is going to listen on the hall. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I like. <laughs> but for me, the read uh, for me what a read that I like is uh, is a read that you can play 
whatever you want to play. High, high, high notes, the very, very high notes, every low notes, all the slur, all the articulations, colors, harmonics. So if a read can bring you all of them, that's for me a very, very good read. I'm not, I'm, I never, I'm not the... I don't know how people do that and it's okay. I really admire people when they have, okay, I have a read for this, I have a read for this. I have, and I was like, wow, how can you remember which one is for <laughs> what? I, I cannot, I barely can remember which read I just shaved yesterday. So, and I think that's why I like to put my reads always the same time too, because I, I don't I don't want to remember which one go, goes for this, which one goes for that. So yeah, for me, it's really important that the read works for everything that you want to play with the bassoon, in the tune that you need, the color that you want. My favorite color is the dark, the dark and really rounded color, but sometimes you need a really bright. So if a read can bring you bright and dark colors at the same time for me, it's a really, really, really nice read. Are there a few important skills that you could share with us that are learned through music that apply to everyday life? There are many, but I, I just want to say like just one or two. The perseverance, to keep uh -huh. going, the, yeah, to not give up, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that a very important skill. It's not just to be optimist, but I think it's another skill that is really nice. But to be optimist at the same time, don't give up, don't give up. It's easy to say, it's, it is easy to say. I remember many times when I was in a really bad, bad day, in a really bad mood. Listen, people say, don't give up. And I say, yeah, you say so easy. And I now I'm saying, don't give up. But I know this, I, now I can know, be, I, I know because yes, it is, if, we, if you give up, it's not, you, it doesn't mean that you couldn't. You, you can, you can do it. Sometimes, as I said before, sometimes it's not just, not the way that you want. I know we, we, we want to go faster. We want to go, we want to do everything like this every time. We don't want to spend too much time practicing. We don't want to spend too much time. We don't want to spend one whole year in just one repertoire, two, three, for you want to play everything i know i want to every time say okay i want to play all the bassoon repertoire and then i realize okay 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 go back be honest be honest with yourself with yourself and just just do it i mean don't give up don't give up the perseverance the constants the constants yes for me those skills are really important and i can say so many others like be punctual be respons res responsibly be honest, uh, be serious, to be a professional. Be a professional is not to be, to be the best bassoon ever in the world. Be a professional is that you really, you, you are really committed with your job, with your work, and you respectful everybody else at your, at your place, at your workplace. It can be the orchestra, a sistema center, a school, whatever. So those skills music have have taught me and I think those are really important. And Ishmael, is there any advice that you could share for musicians just starting out their music careers? <laughs> well, that's the, that's the most easy question because I had <laughs> seven new bass bassoon students this year on Sistema Center. So, <laughs> but you know, well, those, those are really kids. Those are, those are kids between between eight and 10 years old. And it's so nice. It's so, so, so nice. I love to teach them. <laughs> and well, adv one advice is enjoy. I think enjoy, enjoy, enjoy a lot what you're doing and love it. If you really like it, enjoy it. Never stop enjoying and through the music because it's really nice. It's, I mean, Part of my advice is going to be is not going to be easy. We took the one of the most difficult one of the instruments ever. It's not easy to play. Okay, it's not easy to play. It's not easy at the beginning. It's not easy in two four years. But as much as we practice, for for sure, it's going to be it start to be a bit more easy. Okay, <laughs> but 
Even that, enjoy, enjoy. Every time when you take your bassoon and practice, enjoy. Just Even if you just play one whole note. Even if you just play fa whole note or sol or do, whatever. Take the note that you love to play and enjoy every note, every time. And be patient. Sometimes I know that I've, I, I speak by, by my, my self-experience. Now kids want to do everything so quick. They want to, but I want to play, but I want to play, but I want to do this, but I want to do that and say, okay, okay, you will do. I promise you will do, but we need to go step by step, step by step. And then we kill, we can, we can achieve any goal. We can do any, any things that you want to do with the bassoon. And for maybe not beginners, more than beginners is the same that I say before. If you need to take, if you need to take time, take it. If you need to take time to consider what are you doing, it's always nice, okay? Not too much. <laughs> Don't take too much. But if you, need, if, if, you, if you need to think about what you're doing, do it because it's really important to. It's really important to think what are you doing if, and if you really love, just keep going, keep trying, keep trying, never give up, keep trying. It's going to be very, very nice when when you achieve the goal. And when you achieve the goal, you will not notice until you, you are there and then you realize that, wow, I cool. Is there anyone that you would be interested to suggest to be interviewed next for this project? Wow, do you have a pencil? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready, well, I have, I mean, it's, uh, there are many, many, many bassoon players uh, it will be it will be nice to to listen you interviewing them and uh, Jarek Augustiniak is a very good one bassoon bassoon player bassoon is in he's now in England I think yeah in England in UK I had I, and I know him because he was one of my guests at the, at the podcast <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah and he speaks very good English as and <laughs> Spanish as well so yeah, I'm thinking in the in the in the people that can speak with you even better than me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, you have to you have to take you have to have Matthias in your in your interview. Matthias Rax must to be here. He's a wonderful wonderful bassoon player, and it's a he's a wonderful person. He's a wonderful guy. I I really I really admire him since the beginning, since the very beginning when I met him in Venezuela. Uh, for sure, Hans. Hans and he's but he's going to hate me when I say that because I know that he doesn't like to speak too much in English <laughs> but it will be nice to have Hans he's another guy he, he's, he inspires me he inspired me a lot what he has done with his career for sure Simon I don't know if you if you had had Simon Van Hollen Simon Van Hollen I think he's a nice guy too I haven't met in person but I have seen his some master classes, some recordings, and uh, his job at the Concertgebouw Orchestra. For sure, Gustavo Nunez is a big maestro. Everybody knows. Every almost everybody knows who is Gustavo Nunez when we when you play bassoon. Uh, who, who else? Well, you already had Nadina, and she is nice because I haven't even though we lived in Canada, we haven't met yet. Uh, but it was a nice so. Oof, I don't know, Julie. I can I, I can spend I can I can say many 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 people that you can had in your in your interview because it's really really nice. Well, those are wonderful, Ishmael, and I'd love to reach out to them. And so thank you. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity to interview you today. And thank you for this chance to get a glimpse into your life and career as a professional musician. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Julie. It's so nice to, to, to talk, to chat with you every time. Thank you so much. And thank you for doing this. It's really nice. It's really nice. It inspired, you inspired me at the same time to keep going, to keep going with the interviews in Spanish. <laughs> for everyone watching, check out Ishmael's live hosting discussion session coming up this Sunday, where he's sharing more about the importance of music education and El Sistema how to step outside the concert hall and how we can better reach people with music, all about his El podcast, De Los Fagotes, and so much more. 
Find out more about Ishmael and his work at the New Brunswick Youth Orchestra website and of course his YouTube channel, Los Fagotes. Please like, comment, and share any questions or feedback in the section below, and we'd be happy to incorporate these in the live discussion. Please subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell for notifications, which really helps keep the music link moving forward. The music link is a New Zealand based resource for people around the world to share, learn and connect through music. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.